Welcome to this lecture from ZBrush Character and Concept Sculpting Module 1 course. Now I've decided to do a series of videos showing little parts of my Character and Concept Sculpting Module 1 course which I've got out which you can find a link below. Um, the reason I'm doing this is that I want to show you quick things that I'm going to be doing in the course and you might decide actually you want to take this course because I go into a lot more detail over things so I'm going to do a few videos in series here and um, basically this is a model that you can see here and you can see the course key points that I've got there such as hair sculpting, sculpting base to high res, create and insert uh, brushes, micro mesh surface noise, nano mesh, curve on surface brushes, high detail projection, stitching, decoration, posing your sculpt and also rendering and a hell of a lot more so check out the link below to see the full course details and um, what you're going to get if you decide to purchase the course so these are little snippets um, another reason I'm doing it is that you can see if you like my teaching style if you like it then you might want to spend hours listening to me do the actual course which is over 180 video lectures and literally must be about 40 50 hours worth of recording so um, let's begin and the first thing we're going to cover here is surface noise okay so in this um, little lesson what I've got is I've actually got the model from the course that you're creating and I'm going to apply some surface noise to this mask so um, I'm going to turn I'm going to activate the mask layer and I'm just going to turn these two off so you can see this now it's important that you have UVs laid out for this as will be evident later and also that we have poly groups set up for it as well so I'm not going to go into that that's all covered in my course um, UV setups and these sort of things but I'm going to apply the surface noise now it's important with this because I want it to be tiling that it is actually a tiling texture and again I do that in the course so I'm just going to show you the application of this rather than going into very much detail on how you can create create tileable alphas and UV layouts. So we'll look at what happens when we haven't got a UV layout at, on it and we'll look at it when we have. So first thing to do is I'm going to turn this off and we're going to go straight down to the surface noise. Now also remember in this I have uh, four, um, five subdivision levels on this so this is a low poly mask as you can see um, and we have the high division on that as well. So okay let's go in surface noise and open up the noise generator so what I'll do is I'll just frame this in here at the moment and what you can see is we've got the general um, noise that you can apply using the kind of noise fractal pearly pearlies um, effect that you get inside of noise maker by default which is really handy for breaking things up and creating kind of uh, maybe a slightly ripply kind of surface um, to it so you also have a noise scale on here so you can scale this right down to get really fine detail and it just sort of breaks up the surface so it can be quite good for getting rid of sort of gloss surface and giving it more of a rougher texture it's really good for that but I don't want to use this I want to break this away and I want to use an alpha so I'm going to go in and select an alpha and I've got a few here that I've set up so I'm going to go into the one that we're using the course which is this direct deck decorative one now at the moment you're not going to see a lot but if I zoom this in a bit and just kind of move it down what we've got now is we've got this alpha and we have the general noise um, over the top of it so what I need to do is I need to get rid of the general noise so I'm going to take this mix basic noise and this mixes it with the alpha down to zero so now you're going to see some things happening on screen and if I take this um, alpha noise down you can see I can start to apply that pattern to it so I'm going to go about that size I'm going to increase the strength or the power of that and I'm just going to click OK and what you can see on the model now is that we have that on there but if you look at the nose in particular we've got a lot of stretching going on and this is because it is not UV'd so if we go and open up the editor again you can see I've just got 3D turned on and you'll notice in here the UV is turned off because there's no UVs on this model 
So with UVs, you can get a completely different effect. So I'm going to UV this, and then I'm just going to show you. So I'm going to pause that whilst I... Right, now this mask now has been UV'd, and I've also set up two groups. Um, it's important to set the groups up for splitting out. So if I press Control shift you can see that I've just got that front part of the mask, and this piece is the rest. So if I now go into my surface noise and I reactivate it and turn it on, uh, now we've got the option, now it's UVs, I've got the option of clicking UV. Now watch what happens to the nose when I click UV. Now, um, the scaling has changed slightly, but if I bring this down and then I increase this volume a little bit and click OK, now you can see it's much more even over the whole model. Let me just take this up to division level five. So that's what we have. Now, if I want to get, um, and this is the importance of doing uh, polygroups, if I want to just apply it to this part and not to this edge part, what I can do is I can press the control and shift on this part of the mask. I can then mask it. Watch what happens to the model when I mask it. No pattern gets put on it. So if I press the control shift and click, now what I can do is I can actually inverse the mask by pressing the control key and clicking once. So now we've only got it applied to here. Now I could apply this to mesh to hard bake it in here, or I can leave it so that I have the ability to go and change this later. So to not be able to view the mask, what you can do is under this tool, um, you can turn view mask off. Now that's still got a mask on it, so you need to be really careful here, because if I go ahead and move this, it's still got a mask on it, and it's gonna do really weird things. So be careful with that um, if, you move, if you're gonna move a piece, because that's gonna cause a problem. But, so, because it's actually got a mask on there. So I'm just turning that mask off so we can't view it. So now, what will happen with the surface noise is we now have the ability to go in here and make changes to things such as surface noise, size, and click OK and it'll update. Not only that, we can go in and edit this and we could replace this. So I could turn this alpha off here and I could go in and grab another alpha such as something like that, click OK and it'll update automatically. So this is really powerful to be able to go in and do this. So if I'm gonna change this alpha size down and increase that strength a little bit and then click OK, it's really quick to be able to do that. So you put that into something like an antique and then do a quick render of it, you're gonna get a really good effect. So you can quickly change and add alphas inside of ZBrush, so really powerful. So I was just showing you the technique that can be used there. Obviously there's a lot more to it, you know, setting up your UV, setting up your polygroups, hiding the uh, masking part of it. And of course, if I wanted to apply this to the mask, I could just hit here and apply to the mask and it would be hard baked into that only. So let's just do that quickly now. I've only got five subdivision levels, so I'm gonna lose a bit of quality on this, but I'm gonna click apply to mesh and you can see I've lost quality. So control Z, let's go back to this. I need to just get rid of the mask because I'm gonna up the levels on here. So I'm gonna to go to masking, I'm gonna view that mask and I'm gonna clear the mask to get rid of it. So you'll see that the pattern has appeared over it all now. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna subdivide this a couple of times to give me a really high poly mesh. Now I'm gonna press the control shift on to this pit. Let me just go down to the lowest subdivision level, control shift on here. Then I'm gonna control shift drag and I'm gonna mask control shift drag to get it all to come back. Now I'm gonna take this up to level seven and we've got that. So you can see I've added a little bit of um, softness there. So I don't want that softness. So I'm control shifting this piece again. I'm gonna mask across it. I'm gonna control shift, invert that mask. And now if I apply it, because I've added two extra subdivision levels, if I now go down to my, I don't need to turn, turn off view mask to apply it to mesh. It'll only apply it to unmasked areas. But if I go to surface noise and apply to mesh, this is going to recalculate, and now I've got a much better effect, and that's hard baked into the model. You'll notice that surface noise is turned off, and the masking is turned off as well. So that is actually hard baked in there. Okay, and that's because I've got more subdivision levels, so it's giving me more detail. 
All right, so hopefully you've enjoyed that course. If you want to know more about um, using the Surface Noise plugin as well as a Noise Maker plugin, UV layout, polygroup, setting up polygroups and auto grouping, then obviously have a look at the link down, down at the bottom where I give you a big discount on the course and also watch the promo that's coming up right now. Welcome to this course, Module 1, ZBrush Concept and Detailed Character Sculpting course. So this module is one of a series taking you from initial design all the way to a ZBrush game ready asset with hours of video training. Now in this particular module, Module 1, we're going to be concentrating on actually concept and detailing a character to get it like the course image that you're seeing in front of you now. So along the way, we're gonna be covering a host of features, including the following. Creating a base meshes, I'm gonna show you three different ways of doing that. We're gonna be building a high resolution body from the base mesh, and we'll be detailing it through all of the steps. So I'll be taking it from a simple base mesh. I'll be showing you three different ways of creating those base meshes, and then we'll be actually taking one of those and detailing that model up. We'll be creating a likeness sculpt of the face. We'll be using Dynamesh and the difference between subdivided sculpts and Dynamesh. So I'll be showing you the concepts there. Be looking at um, topology tools for rigging and creating clean geometry using spotlight for reference and looking at reference in general and the importance of it we'll be looking at different methods for tiling alphas and full demonstration of those methods be creating hair fur and leather using the sculpting brushes inside of zbrush we'll also be looking at using micro mesh and nano mesh for armor and to be able to swap easily swap the micro meshes and nano meshes out to quickly give you a different effect we'll be using the surface noise and the noise maker plugin be creating complex boolean actions for subtraction and creating the u mesh from these we'll be creating insert multi mesh and curve on surface brushes both appending and adding new brushes plus saving them as well be keeping your scene organized and using references. We'll also be, when we finished detailing the high res parts, subtools, we'll be using T pose to pose our final sculpt. Now, I'll also be showing you how to use Z spheres for rigging as well, for setting Z spheres up as rigs inside of ZBrush. Be showing you how to save custom views and save the document as well as the tool. We will look at materials, color, and lighting as well as rendering out from ZBrush and as additional feature I'll be showing you how to bring that into Keyshot and render out from that as well and then finally we're going to end up with compositing our render passes in this case I'm going to be using Photoshop to render them in now additionally as well as all of what I've just mentioned I'll be showing you many many tips and tricks along the way so I would expect this course to be completed in about three to four weeks. Just make sure you understand each step before you move on. There's over 180 video files, so it's hours and hours and hours of content, and some of the assets are supplied to get you started. Now there's support and a Q&A area that you can post questions, because there's going to be questions. It's a very complex course. So the software that you're going to need to complete this course is ZBrush. I'm using version 2018. You can use 2018 or 2019. Um, for compositing, I'll be using Photoshop, but you can use something similar. Pretty much all of the packages, such as GIMP, which is a free one, will allow you to set it up as well. And if you've got Keyshot, great, because I show you how to render in that as well. So as I mentioned, this is module one of many of the courses that I'm going to be building on. So I'm going to be using the same asset in the next module, module two, and so on until we complete all of the modules to get us to a game ready model, which I'll be actually putting into Unity or UDK 
uh, Marmoset tool bag for viewing, rendering, creating turntables. So if you're interested in game, this is module one of it, follow them all the way through. This is by far, I would say, one of the longest parts of the course, the module, because you're actually sculpting something and this is the base for what we're gonna use to create all of the other courses from. So I really hope you enjoy this course and yeah, I look forward to seeing you on the course and um, answering your questions.